Hello, my name is Pip Williams and I'm the author of this book, The Dictionary of Lost Words. This is a book that I um, have spent the last few years writing and I have enjoyed every minute of it. It's a book that started in Oxford, ended in Oxford, and the last time I was in Oxford was actually just before lockdown, just in the last couple of months of 2019. I was over there to do my final research trip where I would spend um, hours at the Oxford University Press delving into the archives of the Oxford English Dictionary, handling the slips of paper that people had written words and sentences on that would help James Murray collate his Oxford English Dictionary. I read letters, I read newspaper clippings, I saw photographs, which all contributed to the story that I've written here. And after I spent hours in the um, Oxford University Press archives, I would walk around Oxford. I'd walk the streets that my characters would walk. I would try to imagine them a hundred years earlier. Um, and then I'd always end up outside Blackwell's bookstore. And I have to admit, <laughs> I would do what all budding writers do. I would stand in front of the windows and imagine my book in the window of Blackwell's bookstore. It was one of those dreams that was nearly impossible, but I dared to dream it anyway. And I think today is publication day in the UK and I can't be there, um, but I've heard that Blackwell's will be putting my book in the window of their store and I can't tell you how grateful I am. I wish I could see it, um, but it's, I suppose it's the least of the um, impositions that we have to suffer under COVID. And if I can't be there, I'm glad that there will be people standing outside the bookstore and looking at my book. I thought I'd start uh, perhaps this little video by um, reading from the beginning of the Dictionary of Lost Words. Most of you won't have read it yet. Um, and so I'm hoping that these few pages encourage you to keep reading. Prologue, February 1886. Before the lost word, there was another. It arrived at the scriptorium in a second-hand envelope. The old address crossed out and Dr Murray, Sunnyside, Oxford, written in its place. It was Dar's job to open the post and mine to sit on his lap like a queen on her throne and help him ease each word out of its folded cradle. He'd tell me what pile to put it in and sometimes he'd pause, cover my hand with his and guide my finger up and down and around the letters, sounding them into my ear. He'd say the word and I would echo it. Then he'd tell me what it meant. This word was written on a scrap of brown paper, its edges rough where it had been torn to match Dr Murray's preferred dimensions. Da paused and I readied myself to learn it, but his hand didn't cover mine, and when I turned to hurry him, the look on his face made me stop. As close as we were, he looked far away. I turned back to the word and tried to understand. Without his hand to guide me, I traced each letter. What does it say? I asked. Lily, he said, like Mama, like Mama. Does that mean she'll be in the dictionary? In a way, yes. Will we all be in the dictionary? No. Why? I felt myself rise and fall on the movement of his breath. A name must mean something to be in the dictionary. I looked at the word again. Was Mama like a flower? I asked. Da nodded, the most beautiful flower. He picked up the word and read the sentence beneath it, then he turned it over, looking for more. It's incomplete, he said, but he read it again, his eyes flicking back and forth as if he might find what was missing. He put the word down on the smallest pile. Dar pushed his chair back from the sorting table. I climbed off his lap and readied myself to hold the first pile of slips. This was another job I could help with, and I loved to see each word find its place among the pigeonholes. He picked up the smallest pile, and I tried to guess where Mama would go. Not too high and not too low, I sang to myself. But instead of putting the words in my hand, Da took three long steps toward the fire grate. 
and threw them into the flames. There were three slips. When they left his hand, each was danced by the draught of heat to a different resting place. Before it had even landed, I saw Lily begin to curl. I heard myself scream as I ran towards the grate. I heard Dar bellow my name. The slip was writhing. I reached in to rescue it, even as the brown paper charred and the letters written on it turned to shadows. I thought I might hold it like an oak leaf, faded and winter crisp. But when I wrapped my fingers around the word, it shattered. I might have stayed in that moment forever, but Dar yanked me away with a force that winded. He ran with me out of the scriptorium and plunged my hand into the snow. His face was ashen, so I told him it didn't hurt. But when I unfurled my hand, the blackened shards of the word were stuck to my melted skin. Some words are more important than others. I learned this growing up in the scriptorium, but it took me a long time to understand why. So that's where the story starts and basically Esme is a fictional character but I've woven her story through the story of the Oxford English Dictionary. I've tried to understand what influence a girl might have on the English language and the words that were being collected 100 years ago and I've also tried to understand what effect those words might have on a girl as she grows into a woman. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.